today, I'm going to answer your most asked questions while going on a safari trip with some of my best friends. I'll share everything you guys wanted to know, including my thoughts on university, my background in filmmaking, my most life-changing experiences, tips on being successful on YouTube, my daily habits, and my plans for the future. Besides that, I will take you on a hell of an exciting adventure with some insane animal spottings and a sketchy FPV drone rescue mission. You can even smell the batteries, bro. <laughs> Crab is in the car. <laughs> 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 Yo, that's so weird, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be filmed in slow mo. <laughs> Alrighty, so the first question is, Nicholas, I love music and I was wondering who your favorite artist slash band is, or do you have more than one? I would say for me, there are basically two artists that kind of had an impact on me. I would say the first one is Woodkid. I just love his style of music. I don't even know what kind of genre it is. And the second one would be NF. I think that he is the best rapper out there because he just kind of like shares the darkest moments of his life while still having a little bit of sarcasm in it. And yeah, I think they're both just really great artists. First sighting of the morning. Interesting little mud crab. <laughs> the cat needs probably... Oh, there he goes. Where is, is he? The vehicle? Is he in the car? We've got a new passenger. <laughs> <laughs> crab is in the car. Crab is somewhere here in the car. Here, Gaston, you look so badass like that. So, are you a fool? <laughs> How are you doing? We got him. There he is, there he is. Come on, there he goes. Crab is in the water again. <laughs> what would you say has been your biggest, happiest high and your toughest low? What did you learn from these ups and downs? How did it change you as a person and as a content creator? Super interesting question. I would say my lowest low was probably at the age of 16, 17 when I kind of like approached the end of high school and I was really like under pressure to choose a career path for the rest of my life even though I had no clue about what I was going to do. Yeah, that just really stressed me out. A lot of self-doubt, a lot of like time where I felt misunderstood but my highest high probably um, right after that when I just decided to travel for one year around the world I've been in Asia Australia and Canada and Alaska and during that time it was just like pure freedom I had absolutely no responsibilities and I just really took the time to develop as a person and I think that that was just really cool to see how I grew as a person also how I discovered photography and filmmaking for me and I think that both lows and highs are just a normal part of the journey you have to have both of them and you you have to have the lows in order to really cherish the highs so yeah i think it is just really important to sit with your emotions if you're feeling down uh, in order to work through it and in order to let go and be ready for the next high nailed it, <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> they're just sending some giraffes right in front of us honestly i think that giraffes are the most underrated animals <laughs> like the beautiful texture on their skin the long necks and those cute antennas <laughs> the antennas <laughs> <laughs> nah it's actually horns for fighting but i call it antennas <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Oh, he's pooping. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, so now we're actually jumping on a boat and hopefully we'll see some hippos there. Oh. What are some of the habits you try to keep on a daily basis regardless of how busy you are? And what are the skills we should develop when we start our first jobs? I get up at 7 a.m. each morning. I meditate for 10 minutes each day. I try to do sports at least three times per week. I'm always in flight mode when I work to get rid of distractions. And I make time for the people I love, like my family and my friends. And when you start your first job, I think that a lot of these things will definitely help you, especially getting rid of distractions and also probably making time to reflect on your current situation. So you're the game ranger and, and the, the skipper. captain. Call me Skipper Reese. Captain! Captain sounds better. I am the captain now. No <laughs> reference needed. <laughs> It's so cool to actually switch to a boat compared to a car and actually to spot animals from here. Um, I'm just really curious if we're gonna see a hippo. How did you learn storytelling, editing and animations? If you did any course about it, please let me know. So I myself actually learned everything, everything through YouTube tutorials because I started very early. I had a lot of time. I didn't really have much money. So that's why I just stick to YouTube videos. Would I do it again? No, I would definitely go for an online course. There are tons of good courses out there and they are going to save you a lot of time because they are just kind of streamlined 
went towards teaching you that one skill. Besides YouTube, I learned everything through just like work experience. I did two internships. I worked for two years for another race driver who also had a YouTube channel. So yeah, throughout those years, I just developed all of my skills when it comes to storytelling, editing, animations, and all that stuff. And there've been a ton of people asking me whether or not I'm going to create an online course. Yes, I want to create one. I hopefully will create one, but I just think that it is a massive project. It takes, it takes a lot of time and I want to do it properly. And for that reason, I kind of like pushed it back towards the second half of this year so that you guys can still enjoy some YouTube videos before that. Is slash can filmmaking and photography be a side hobby and not a serious profession? Yes, 100%. I think it is super important to determine whether or not you want to make your hobby a profession because as soon as you make it your job, there's a lot of things that come with it. And there's also a constant battle between the passion and the money. And yeah, for this reason, I think it is super important to just really find out if you want to dedicate your whole life towards one craft or if you just want to just have fun and enjoy it. Uh, for this reason, I also have, for example, that a neon sign on my wall, which says passion comes first because I just always want to remember myself to make the right decisions to actually keep the fun in my work instead of just making money. So Gaston is about to launch the FPV drone. How are you feeling? Kind of nervous because yesterday we have a failure and we almost <laughs> lost the drone. Yeah, I don't know what just happened and I cannot see through the goggles and I think I fixed it. So we're going to try it right now. Honestly, this is the worst place yeah, yeah, to yeah. try it for the but first exactly time again. Exactly. It's like water all around. But yeah, Gaston, he just loves the risk. <laughs> Bro, I cross my fingers for you, hey? Any last words? <sighs> we're going to do it. <laughs> it's recording. Looking good so far. Holy shit, it just crashed straight into the water. Fucking hell. As Matt quickly undressed himself in order to jump into the water, there were hundreds of questions running through my head. How deep is it? Are there any dangerous animals? Where the fuck is that hippo? Guys, wasn't a good idea. <laughs> After our game ranger Reese also jumped in to help, I realized that my lookout for hippos was for nothing all along, as there were actually no hippos in this part of the reserve. I, I kind of jinxed it, huh? Yeah. Fuck. Do you guys see anything? Like here, yeah. After around five minutes of searching, the LiPo battery of the drone exploded underwater. Oh, you can see the smoke coming out of the water. That was a battery that was burned. You can even smell the batteries, bro. I hope we find it. <laughs> With the smoke, Matt was able to locate the drone and he dove down in order to grab it and save the day. We found the drone, holy shit. No way. So that battery's not gonna explode or anything, right? Yeah. No, it, not I think anymore. it's already exploded. Oh, no way. You can smell. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Bro, you're, you're a fucking lifesaver, eh? I was so worried that that thing was gonna explode like as I grabbed it, dude, so I was like, yeah, holding it out, yeah. Honestly, you're freaking lucky that you yeah. got that GoPro back. Right? That was super, super so, weird, so, like so, lost so signal like, like two meters from here. It's and it was so bad timing because the, the signal like went out like right next to the boat, like in the water. Yo, it's another sad day in the world of filmmaking. Well, I saw it filmmaking in... life. <laughs> it is, it is. It is. is. I, I thought we would see another drone in drone heaven, but yeah. I'm lucky we got it back, man. Yeah, yeah. All right, I would say that was a medium successful boat adventure, <laughs> but now we're just heading back to the car. How much time does your videos take to make? Start to finish from an idea to YouTube description tags, etc. Would love if you could break down each section. Okay, so basically when it comes to the script, I most of the time work for one day on it. Shooting is mostly two days and editing really depends on the video, but somewhere between three to five days and then around like two hours for YouTube metadata. So that's like description, text, title, thumbnail and all that stuff. <sighs> what are the things you outsource slash give out of your hands so you can focus on what you do best? So I have to say that outsourcing is definitely a topic I've struggled with a little bit because I just find it hard to give the creative aspects of my business to another person. But yeah, for that reason, I already have a part-time assistant, Nicole, who's doing like a lot of different admin things. Like she's doing emails, invoicing, bookkeeping, also the YouTube metadata now. And yeah, she's doing a great job. But besides that, I'm actually still looking for one talented 
edits. Um, as you know, I have my own online shop for my editing assets. And as I said, I also plan to launch an online course at some point down the road. And I'm still looking for a person who can just help me there to create different assets for the online shop, who can create trailers, who's probably also going to edit the whole online course. Yeah, so if you head to the second link in the description, you can find a lot more information about that. It will be full time. It's going to be a remote job. You have to be an absolute magician when it comes to After Effects and Premiere Pro. You just really have to know what you're doing. Um, I'm looking for an experienced person, but if you think that you could be that person, then feel free to head over to the second link in the description, read through it. And if you think that you would be a good fit, then fill out the form and apply. And hopefully we're going to see us in an interview. <laughs> So we just spotted a rhino with his baby. So I just have the drone up and I'm gonna get a couple of tele shots of us driving by. <laughs> That looks insane. <laughs> yeah, this is Tanli, which is like the most famous rhino around here. She's a world star because she was actually a victim of poaching. They took off her whole horn, but she uh, survived it. And she actually gave birth to how many babies are there? Four babies and now grandchild. and a grandchild. She's a hell of a mother, I would say. She is definitely one of the main attractions here. Beautiful, hey? All right, let's go on with some questions. How did you build your team or find people to help you film? As I said, I don't really have any like people employed or anything like that who are filming for me, but I'm just like connecting with other creators and filming with friends. And especially as filmmakers, it's just a huge win-win situation because basically, yeah, you can just film each other. So it's a value for both sides. And the main platform where I just connect with other filmmakers is through Instagram. That's how I met Matt. And also that's how I met Gaston, who's currently trying to film a tour tour. <laughs> Is it too fast for you? It's too fast. Like, look, I'm moving. I think. <laughs> if you go to university, what major would you choose? Probably I would choose psychology. I'm just very interested in that topic. I think that our minds are one of the most interesting things to figure out. And also I think that there's a close relation between storytelling and psychology. And that was always the side of filmmaking which really interested me on like how to really influence the emotions of other people through videos. Oh my god, I think that was the most insane game drive I had so far. It's freaking hot, so I think we're just gonna jump into the pool before we head out again. Ooh. So, I am happy to say that this video is once again sponsored by my friends over at Artlist, which is a high quality music licensing platform that I've been using for the last four years. They've been a sponsor right since the beginning of this YouTube channel and it's amazing to see how much their company grew and how they took over the market in the last few years. One thing that separates Artlist from many other music licensing platforms out there is the effort that they put into maintaining the quality of their music at the highest level. And in order to do that, they actually have a dedicated music curation team Team, which adds new songs every single day and makes sure that only the best music lands on their platform. Also, the user interface of their platform is beautifully designed and super simple to use as you have a ton of different filters, like for example, the mood, video theme, genre and instruments, but also other details like the vocals, beats per minute or the song duration. And these different filters really help you to find a song that perfectly matches the story and emotion of your video in only a few minutes. Their two different subscription tiers are super affordable and besides the music, you will also get access to their huge sound effects library for free. So if you're a creator and you need music for your videos on social media or for clients and other paid projects, then make sure to head over to the first link in the description. And if you sign up through that link, you will actually get an extra two months for free on top of your annual subscription. That was it. I'm doing now sponsored integrations out of a pool. <laughs> Man, this is so sick here. And now let's actually head out again into the wild and answer some more of your questions. What are your thoughts on quote unquote love relationships and them getting in the way of your personal growth? So I think that a person shouldn't really commit to a relationship in the first way when they're still busy figuring out themselves. I think it's just not the right place to start. But in general, I think that relationships don't really get in the way of your personal growth unless it's kind of like the wrong relationship. I think that if it's a good one that it can actually like fuel that personal growth and you can really push 
each other. It was beautifully said, huh? Well said. Oh, dude, I okay. like that. <laughs> I'm sitting here like, mm, okay. Yeah. <laughs> when you were in your starting phase of YouTube, did you ever feel that all of this hard work might not work and everything could go to waste? If yes, then how were you able to go beyond it? Basically, I had a lot of self-doubt when it comes to a lot of phases in my life, but uh, when it comes to my own YouTube channel, I think I was already quite confident because I had already tried so many different other YouTube channels before. Also, I just really felt like the stories I wanted to share would resonate with other people. So yeah, that was just a really good starting point for it. And also, obviously, I had already built all of my skills to really share my ideas and stories in the ways that I wanted to share them. But I definitely wouldn't say that any of the time would have been wasted uh, if I didn't grow that much because all of that like time that you use for like creating videos is time where you learn a lot and you're going to grow as a person and your videos will also become a lot better so I think that no matter how big your channel is um, no time is wasted and I would do the same if only a couple hundred or a couple thousand people were listening to the stuff I say yo so apparently there is one hippo somewhere around is it there there it is you see the nostrils yeah. oh. that is the most dangerous animal in Africa what noises do hippos make? <laughs> what? <laughs> one more, give us one more. <laughs> Yo, all of us had a little bit too much sleep right now, eh? Did your parents fully support you when you decided to drop out of college and began the journey around the world at age 17, as well as following your passion as a filmmaker thereafter? So two things about that are already wrong. I didn't drop out of college. I didn't even go to college in the first place. And I started traveling at age 18. But to answer your question, uh, yes, I have very supporting and loving parents. I think like when it comes to their mindsets, my mom is a little bit more traditional because she just grew up in a more conservative family and had kind of like normal jobs. But when it comes to my dad, um, my dad actually has his own company and therefore I actually take a lot of entrepreneurial advice from my dad. I think like my parents never really told me what to do but overall there was still a little bit of pressure or a feeling that I'm just doing something different because my brother actually went the academic route and went to universities and is working like in a really good uh, company and therefore I, I thought like yeah I really have to make this work as quickly as possible and also I'm kind of like the only guy in the family who is doing something really creative so I was always kind of like the black sheep but yeah overall to answer your question my parents were supportive and uh, yeah I love my parents <laughs> what was the first camera you started filming with and how many upgrades have you had since then so basically I started filming when I was 12 I think on a like small digital camera from Olympus then afterwards I got a Panasonic camcorder I believe it was called the HC V707 and it had like a 46 times zoom I think then after that I got a GoPro Hero 3 which I think was not really an upgrade and then when I came back after my travels I actually got my first proper camera which was the Sony a6500 and then probably one and a half years ago I upgraded to the Sony a7S 3 which I'm filming on right now yo we just discovered a huge herd of elephants and now we're just trying to go right next to them okay. yo it's a whole family they're actually like three small babies with them we just went off track and now we're waiting for them to come here. Holy shit. Look at the small one. Yo, this is the most insane thing I've ever seen. Yo, that was absolutely insane. So Reese just told us that when the elephants see the car, they basically just think that we as a whole car are one animal. And that's why they actually don't really get scared, but they just walk by like one meter in front of us.
how did you get over the awkward stage of beginning to film in public and have your friends ever gotten annoyed that you're filming? Back then obviously it was very weird to stand in front of the camera and to just like film myself while talking, especially when I'm talking in English and my friends are German. But over the years like I just built a lot of confidence when it comes to that and I think that is the main tip that I can give to everybody is to just like practice and to just do it over and over again and the more confidence you build up the easier it will become to talk in front of cameras. Obviously not every every situation is the right one for it. Some people just don't like to be filmed. So you kind of like have to read the situation before it. And that is also one reason why it's so cool to travel with other creators because Dude, we just- Dude, you're so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. You're not even good. Okay, okay. What I wanted to say is that it's cool to travel with other creators because obviously they also like to talk in front of the camera and you're just kind of in the same boat. But yeah, as soon as you enter a situation with a lot of confidence, nobody re will feel weird. And also for you, it will be a lot more natural. <laughs> I'm just joking, you're really Fuck good. You. <laughs> <laughs> How did you decide to go from shooting projects to starting a serious YouTube career? Yeah, basically, as I said, I started watching YouTube at a very early age, started different channels that kind of failed. And yeah, after working for two years for another YouTuber, I just kind of like saw how much potential it is in YouTube. And also after working a lot for other companies, I just got a little bit tired of always just making a video about the visions of other companies and other people instead of sharing my own story. Yeah, for this reason, I just decided uh, to like get into YouTube and to do my own thing because yeah, I just want to share my own learnings and my own stories with other people in the world. What do you think it takes to be successful on YouTube like yourself? And do you think it is a skill that can be taught? So I think there are a couple of different steps you need to take. First of all, you have to kind of like find a passion, something you're really passionate about. You have to find a way to share that passion and also provide value to other people. You should ignore the views and the likes. Don't get caught up in the analytics. And also you should play the long game and be really consistent over a long period of time. And yeah, I think that is definitely a skill that can be taught. More, more, more. <laughs> okay, and action. Yeah, and cut. <laughs> cut, cut. Yes, guys. Good, guys. How did you come across filmmaking and content creating? What are the other things that you would have been doing if you weren't a creator or anything related to filmmaking and shooting? As I said, I uh, came across filmmaking through YouTube because I was just like binge watching YouTube for my whole childhood. And uh, if I weren't doing filmmaking, then probably I would find some sort of other expression, like for example, music. I would love to try out what it's like to produce music. Did you sacrifice a lot of sleep when you were just starting or did you make sure to take care of yourself? So so yeah, in the beginning, I spent a lot of long nights watching tutorials, learning a lot of stuff, working as well. But over the years, I just really realized that, yeah, our energy is just like a battery that you need to recharge every single day in order to perform at your highest level. And that's why nowadays I just really try to keep a good balance and yeah, to just like rest and recharge my batteries. I actually created a video about that. So if you want to check it out, you can find it up here. So that was a hell of a game drive. So a lot of different animals. Now we're actually going to head back to the lodge. So let's do two last questions. What is your main goal in life? You're great, keep it up. Thank you very much. In general, I just want to spread as much positivity and kindness as possible with all of the people that I meet and also with all of the people watching my videos. And overall, my goal is just to really like help people get rid of the distractions and expectations of a modern world and really just focus on building a life where they are passionate about what they do and they are fulfilled by their work. And now last but not least, have you ever got tired of what you're doing and thought of quitting? So I have to say with my other jobs, after some time, it definitely became repetitive and monotonous where I just wanted to quit and do something else. But with YouTube, I really feel like there are endless possibilities. I have so many different ideas and stories I want to tell and I don't really see me quitting anytime soon. I am um, just hyped about creating new videos and that's why I'm not really thinking about quitting at all. This is really my dream job and I'm so happy that uh, uh, yeah we were able to build this sort of community so yeah that's it for this video thank you so much for all of the different questions i think there were some really good ones i tried to answer as many as possible i really enjoyed this sort of like video format let me know down below in the comments how you enjoyed this q a and if you would like to see more of these in the future and then i'm going to see you guys in the next one peace out bye bye